Hi, in this video, we're going to make a survival game in Python. The code will be in the description below. There's going to be a lot of places in this code that you can add or modify and make it whatever you want. Uh, we're going to go over step by step how to build that in this video. We have Visual Studio Code open. Um, let's go ahead, we'll go over to the left here and we'll, these four buttons will appear. Go ahead and click the one to the very left. That's the new file button. Uh, from there, we'll go ahead and type game.py and hit enter. From here, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll code uh, everything. Um, at the very top of your Python file, you'll include modules. So we'll come in here and the only module that we need is random. Modules are um, Python code that you can use in other files. And some modules come built in with Python, um, or you can also uh, download modules from uh, the internet using pip, or you can uh, create your own modules. Uh, we're gonna bring in the random module. Uh, this game is gonna have some random choice behind it, so we'll go ahead and do that. For our game, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to declare our variables. So we need to keep track of a couple things like the health, the hunger, how many turns it's been, etc. Um, you can add to this too if you want. I'll start us off. So let's come in here health equals 100, hunger equals 100, and then we'll do turns equals 0. We'll start it at 0, and we'll say is um, playing, we'll need one more variable, equals. Uh, true. And we'll go from there. These three variables will keep track of the current health and hunger of the player and then what turn that they're on. Cool. This In this game, so to give a little explanation, um, it's going to be a survival game where the player uh, takes turns and each turn they're presented with two random places to go. So it might be, oh, do you want to go to the desert? You want to go to the mountain? Or the next turn it might be, okay, you want to go to the desert or you want to go to the forest. Um, the player won't really have a choice as far as uh, which ones they will, but they'll be able to choose uh, from that which place they want to go. So um, what we need is we need some kind of a, a class, or one way we could do this is a class that would uh, represent the actual place itself. So we'll go ahead and we'll code a uh, class place and then hit enter. To create a new place, we need a constructor. Um, so inside of here, let's, uh, and constructors are a little weird. Some, some students sometimes get uh, tripped up at how it's uh, written. So it's DEF space underscore underscore INIT, and then another two underscores, and then we'll do self. Inside of these parentheses, you put things in there that you want to. Uh, put in to create a new place. Um, I'm going to code this and then we'll kind of look at how this works uh, in a little bit. So we'll come in here, we'll, uh, a place will have a name, uh, a message that comes when the player visits the place. Uh, the place will also um, either drain or raise your hunger. So we'll take in hunger and we'll take in health. And then uh, we'll go from there. From here, we're going to say self dot name equals name. So the current place that we're creating's name is going to be set to whatever we put in here. Now that sounds a little weird, but it'll make a, um, make a little bit more sense here in a second. So we'll do, we'll do that for each one of them. Self.message equals message, self.hunger equals hunger, and self.health equals health. Okay. And then from there, we want to create a list of, uh, or one way we could do this, create a bunch of lists, a list of a bunch of places. So we'll do places equals, and then uh, square brackets. The square brackets um, signify a list. So a list uh, can hold multiple of something um, or nothing at all. So um, we have, you can have like one or zero or five things inside of here. Um, let's go ahead and start creating some of our places. So we'll say place, we need to give it a name, so we'll say desert, and then we do comma space. Now notice, so now we're going on the message. So we're gonna say, uh, you struggle to find food in the desert. By the way, you can make this whatever you want. Make this a little bit smaller. And then from here, what we'll do is we'll say 
Maybe the hunger goes down by negative 20 and the health goes down by negative 20. At the end of the line, we'll do a comma and hit enter. And then you just do the next one. So we come in here, place, grassland, and we'll say, you find food in the grassland. And then we'll come in here and we'll say, maybe the hunger, maybe your, I guess it goes up, right? Maybe you find food. And then the health just kind of stays the same. <clears throat> do several of these. I'm gonna put a couple of them uh, on the screen. Um, <clears throat> but this is really up to you. You can put as many different places as you want. Um, and really the, the more the better, right? Because it makes the game uh, bigger. Um, so we'll come in, I'll do about uh, five more and then we'll, I'll do, uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so looking at this code, um, what we're doing here is we're setting the name of this place to desert. We're setting its message to say, you struggle to find food in the desert. Uh, we're setting the hunger to negative 20. So when the player visits it, uh, we're going to subtract 20 from the player's uh, hunger. And then we're also doing the same thing for health. So we're saying negative 20 for the health. So when the player goes there, their health will go down by 20 as well. Okay, so we'll come in and we will print uh, welcome to a survival game. And we'll go from there. Next thing that we're gonna do is we'll create a while loop. And we'll say while is playing colon and hit enter. Um, a while loop is really useful for when you need to run a bunch of code over and over and over again, but you don't know exactly how long it's going to run for. Um, you have likely used a for loop. A for loop is sort of finite where it's like, oh, we're running 100 times or we're running 50 times or however much or however many places or something. So maybe there's like five places or run five times. Well, a while loop, we don't exactly know how long the player is going to play for. Um, so this is why a while loop is very, very useful. So as long as the player is playing, they could be, they could play for five minutes, they could play for five hours. We don't know. So um, anyway, it'll continue to run this code over and over. Okay, next thing. We need to get two places. Um, so we'll declare a variable first equals, um, and then we'll do places, no, first equals random dot choice, and then we'll say places. So this, the random choice, it'll pick a random one of these. So uh, it'll come in here and maybe it'll be grassland and then the next time it'll be cave or whatever. And then maybe it'll be cave again or whatever it is. Let's do that again. So we'll do uh, second equals random choice. And we'll say places. Now it is very possible that these two places could be exactly the same. Um, and that is one flaw or something that might uh, be worked out later as we kind of, you know, as you go in. Maybe that's a challenge. How would you make those two uh, different? So anyway, uh, but for now we'll leave it. So we'll come in here and um, we need to go up a turn. Um, so we'll come in here and we'll say turns plus equals one. That'll just go up one turn and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and let's output the current health and hunger and then the current turn that the player's on. Print, and then I'm going to use a format string. So go ahead and type F in front of there and then quotes. And then we'll say uh, health and we'll use curly brackets and we'll say health. Notice this is a different color. So it's going to be whatever health is. So maybe health is 100. So this will come in here and say health colon 100 or health colon 95. Whatever health is, it's going to put it in there for us. Kind of like filling out a form. Uh, we're going to do the same thing for uh, this as well. And we'll come in and we'll say hunger and hunger. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing for the, um, let's do the current turn. And we'll do turns, whatever that is. And then we'll go from there. We need to find uh, what um, what the player wants to do. So we want, uh, okay, we have these two places. We need to present them to the player and let them choose. Um, it's possible the player will choose something wrong. Like it's possible we'll say, okay, which do you want, one or two? And then the player ends up saying five or something. Um, that's very possible. 
So what we want to do is we want to check uh, and continually ask the player until they get the right one. Um, so if they put something wrong, we want to say, hey, okay, no, go back and uh, you know choose the right answer. So we'll do another while loop. So we'll say while, and we can just say true for this one. Uh, we're going to go over uh, break and continue here in a second um, to do this. Uh, so this, I think, is a really good example of this. So we'll come in here and we'll say print, um, please uh, choose an option. Let's come in here and we'll print F, and we'll say number one is... Uh, Let's come in here and we'll say first dot name. The dot means you're going inside of something. So the place dot name, similar to what we did up here. <clears throat> come in here and we'll do the same thing over here. Two, and we'll say second dot name. And we'll go from there. This is where we actually need to get the user input. Um, so we declare a variable and then we set it equal to whatever the user types in. Uh, so we'll come in here and we'll say choice equals input, and then we'll say, um, let's come in here and we'll say enter a number. Okay, next thing, what we're going to do is we'll come in and we'll say if choice equals equals one. So we're checking to see if the user uh, typed in one. Uh, we use quotes because it's text, um, even though... Yes, they type, may have typed in a number. It's still text. The computer doesn't know of it as an integer, or it knows of it as a string or text when, uh, when it gets it from the input. Then what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll um, actually um, subtract or add the um, hunger. So we'll come in here and we'll say uh, hunger plus equals self dot... Not self. We'll come in here and we'll say first dot... Hunger, so the, the hunger of the first place. Uh, then we'll come in here and we'll say health plus equals first dot health, and uh, we'll go from there. Be very careful with these, uh, health and uh, hunger. Just make sure that they, they're they very spelled very, very similar. Um, I actually had to redo the video because I, I put hunger here instead. So uh, just be careful as when you're kind of doing this. So, okay, and then we'll come in here and we'll say print first message, and there it is. Um, so whatever the message is, like, okay, you chose desert, okay, you struggle to find food in the desert, whatever the message is. Okay, this is where we're going to use a break. So we're just going to say break. We're done. We're just breaking out of the loop. Now, notice we've got two loops here. So we've got this one and we have this one. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So um, we are actually breaking out of this one right here. So the break always breaks out of the current loop that you're currently in, not any other loops, you know, further than that. So, um, okay, perfect. Now, uh, next thing, what we'll do is we'll say elif choice equals equals two. Um, elif, uh, if you're coming from like C or uh, JavaScript and you're just unfamiliar with that, um, elif is short for else if, and it's the way you do it in Python. You actually can't type in else if, you have to type elif. So, um, we're checking if the other one was not true, like if it's not one, okay, is it two? And then we'll run that code. All right, let's come in and we'll say hunger uh, plus equals second dot hunger. And then health plus equals second dot health. And we'll go from there. Then we'll do the same thing, print second dot uh, message. And we'll go from there. And then we'll break out of that. If neither of those were the case, like if, and again, you want to check because the user may type in something completely wrong. Um, you want to be exhaustive. You want to check all cases. So we'll come in here and we'll say else, uh, and then we'll say print invalid option, and then say please choose one or two. Kind of help the user out, you know. Um, now, um, this is where we can use our continue. The continue restarts the loop, so it comes right back up here. And the continue works exactly the same way as a break. So we'll, we'll do that. Actually, because we're at the end of the while loop, we don't need to use the continue. So let's just get rid of that. So we'll go from there. Okay, we're now out of the while loop, so we're going to line it up right with that while loop. So we're right outside of this. 
Um, we need to do two more things. One is that we need to, the first thing is we need to um, actually check if the health or hunger go below uh, zero. So let's do that. Let's come in here, we'll say if uh, hunger <clears throat> is less than or equal to, it's written the way that you say it. Some students uh, have done like equals less than, you know, I see that a lot. So do less than or equal to zero. Or, you just type the word or in Python, hunger or health, so now I'm getting it mixed up, less than or equal to zero. Okay, and then we'll come in here and we'll say, um, <clears throat> let's say print game over, and then we'll say um, is playing equals uh, false. And then you could do that. You also could break out of the loop because we're not in this one anymore. We're now in this one. You could do a break there as well. Um, okay. The last thing we need to do is we need to um, check and see if the health goes above 100 or if the hunger goes above 100. And we'll just set it equal to 100. Again, all of this you can customize. So you can kind of make it your own. Um, but I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so hunger... Uh, greater than 100, then we'll say hunger equals 100. And if health greater than 100, health equals 100. Okay, now the we're actually done. So um, let's come in here and let's actually test this. Up at the top right, there is a little run button. Go ahead and click that run button. If for some reason you don't have it, you may need to install the Python extension in VS Code. Um, go ahead and click the run button on the top right, and it will start the survival game. Now, your terminal may look different depending on what kind of system that you're on. Uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, I happen to be on Linux. Um, and so yours probably will look slightly different than mine. Um, but yeah, here we go. So the game is running. It printed the health and the hunger, uh, the current turn that we're on, and it's asking us to choose an option. So we're going to come in here and say, ooh, let's go to uh, the mountain. Oops, like we, okay, we freeze in the mountain, and the health and the hunger go down. One improvement that we could do, maybe we could put a new line after this, like maybe a blank line that uh, would kind of uh, just make everything look a little bit better. Uh, we'll do that here in a second. Um, but let's come in here and just use it and see if there's anything else that you would improve about this. Um, so yeah, play it and just test it. Make sure um, we'll come in here. I'm actually purposely doing not so good options uh, just because I want to make sure that the game actually... Yep, and it does. Okay, so we do game over. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, that being said, the game is now complete. Um, and go ahead and modify it as much as you want. A couple suggestions that I have for you as far as modifying is first, you can add more variables up here at the top. Like maybe you can add thirst or something, right? You don't have to if you want, if, you know, you whatever, you don't have to. Um, and then uh, another suggestion that you could do is you could add more places. And I actually would recommend this one. Add as many as you uh, want. Uh, the more that you add, the longer that the game will uh, be kind of exciting and you know that sort of thing um, and then anything that you see like you can change the name of the game you can change if you add another variable just be sure to print it um, some suggestions for variables maybe you'll keep track of the money maybe you'll keep track of the energy that the player has maybe you'll keep track of whatever there's the thirst or whichever there's a bunch of different things that you can do Another suggestion that you can do is you can um, add a third option. Maybe you'll let the player choose three different options each time. Um, you can do that, uh, but yeah, basically go ahead and um, modify it or whichever as much as you want. Again, the code is down in the description below and it will have comments. So you'll be able to kind of modify it uh, as much as you want and whichever. Um, and if you do modify it, uh, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment if you'd like. And I will see you for the next project, and we'll go from there.